What's up everyone, it's the King of Ruckus, and I know this video is a little late, the PlayStation event was on the 20th, and I'm just now getting around to doing commentary on the 23rd. I really didn't have time this week, I was kind of busy, but um, I did do a blog post about this over on my blog, and I really don't promote my blog too much because I don't post on it too often, but I'll have the link in the description, and just for future reference, it's on my channel page as well. But uh, anything that I don't talk about in this video will probably be over in that blog. Shouts to Colorin. He's one of the people who asked me over on PSN when I'd be putting up a video about this. And I won't be going over all the details of the event because they've been pretty well documented by now. A lot of people have done videos already. I'm going to try and keep this short. The system is obviously geared much more towards developers. A lot of the information we got was leaked already, particularly about the 8 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. I was waiting to see if Sony would confirm that because it was leaked information. Leaked information has a tendency to be surprisingly accurate, but I still like to wait and see what the official word is before I make decisions or start to think about making decisions about big purchases such as this one. Now that the information has been confirmed, it sways me more towards getting the system day one. I'm not entirely sold on doing that. For one thing, you look at this generation and the problems that people had with their PlayStation 3s and Xbox 360s. You know, if you're going to have a quote-unquote slim version that uses less power and is less likely to break down, make that first and then build from there. Don't make something in a rush that's going to fuck up on people. But I want to get a good look at this thing when they finally unveil how it looks. And I want to hear what they have to say about how it's going to keep the insides cool and all that technical shit that they really haven't talked about yet. I understand that there's going to be problems with the first run of systems. That's usually how it always goes, with the exception of maybe Nintendo systems. But, like I said, I'm, I'm going to wait. Like, that's one of the reasons I'm holding off on waiting. This PlayStation meeting had a lot of good news in it, and it's really kind of pushed me away from definitely wanting to wait. It's moved me more towards getting this thing day one. And I want to hear more about what Sony has to say and Microsoft when their system comes out. Another thing that I found interesting is that the PlayStation 4 will support PlayStation Move, but it won't support DualShock 3 controllers. And if it doesn't support DualShock 3 controllers, does that mean it won't support the arcade sticks that people bought last generation? Those are pretty much just modded DualShock 3 controllers. If the PlayStation 4 doesn't, that's good for Mad Cats and everyone else, but for those of us who invested in arcade sticks this generation, we're kind of getting screwed over. Um, and it seems like something that would be pretty easy to fix, like a software fix, even. I don't, I don't see why they couldn't implement DualShock 3 support and or support for this. It doesn't make sense. But we'll have to wait and see. I like the share functionality of the system. I think it's awesome how someone can play your game your single player game over the internet. Even though most self-respecting gamers won't do that, I still think it's a pretty cool feature. I really, really like the fact that this thing records gameplay as you're playing. Because as someone who makes gameplay videos, I don't I should record most of what I play, but I don't. And a lot of times I find that when I'm playing single player games, stuff that I would like to upload, I don't have it recorded because I was just casually playing. But now that it records while you're playing, if something that you like happens, you can just stop, go to that video, you know, cut out a little clip, and for those of us who have uh, capturing software, or capturing hardware, I should say, like Hophog, HD PVRs, you know, we can stop, hook everything up, record it, and then do whatever you want with it later. But for people who don't, they can just upload it to YouTube. And that's one downside of this. You can have a lot of people just uploading random clips you're gonna <laughs> YouTube is probably gonna get spammed once the PlayStation 4 comes out but that's a small price to pay because there's a lot of great gamers out there who don't have a Hapag HD PVR or maybe up until they heard about this weren't really interested in sharing any of their gameplay and this will help put them on the map so this is something overall that I'm really looking forward to I'm looking forward to seeing some really good gameplay from a lot of people who maybe didn't upload gameplay videos every once in a while and this is good, like, I want to see Xbox's answer to this. Xbox's system is so restrictive, it seems to prevent developers from doing things like this. Sony is more wide open, this is why you're seeing all this happen from them. Like, I want to see if Xbox responds to this, and I want to see what Xbox does with their Xbox Live, particularly in regards to the price. If they actually make it free to play online like it is with Sony right now, and as it will be in the next generation, that's a good step. But if they still stick with this, oh, pay us 60 bucks or you don't play online, you don't get access to certain things, that's really disappointing. 
they're gonna do an announcement in April. Sony showed their hand first. They showed a good hand. I really want to see what happens. Nintendo, honestly, I don't think of them as next gen. I really don't. They're this gen. They're current gen. When the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox 720 come out, those are going to be next gen. Nintendo's going to be left in the dust again. Nintendo, ride this Wii U thing out. Stay in the game. It's going to do well. You're behind. You're going to stay behind. You know, just wait until they release their next systems and then come with something that's as powerful or maybe more powerful. Don't release early and then be outdated within a year. <laughs> Someone on my Twitter list, man, one of the people I'm following put RIP Wii U 2012, 2013. And he's absolutely right. They're dated now already. Like they're going to have good stuff coming, but who's going to care? It, aside from Nintendo fans, like I want to play Bayonetta 2, but I'm not going to buy a, one, a system just to play one game. I'll buy the PlayStation 4 where out the out the gate you've got Watch Dogs, you've got fucking Killzone if I decide to get it. I got Infamous, which I know I'm going to want to play. And many other games coming down the pike. You you've got stuff they've got to reveal at E3. And then you got Xbox, who maybe might get their act together. We'll see. But Nintendo, they, I think they're out of it, man. I, I think they're they're behind now. The games they show at the event look good, but the two that stuck out to me were Watch Dogs and Infamous Second Son. Even though Infamous Second Son's trailer was more of a teaser trailer that didn't show gameplay, I'm a really big fan of that series, so I was just hyped to see that. I was hyped to see that they're making another one that's coming to PlayStation 4. And it was confirmed a little later that it's going to be coming out later this year. So I am definitely looking forward to that game more than anything else. Well, not more than Watch Dogs, sorry, but I'm <laughs> really looking forward to it. Watch Dogs again managed to steal the show. Uh, it stole the show at last year's E3. It was a game that most people were talking about. And at an event about the PlayStation 4, a lot of people at the end of it were saying that they were looking forward to Watch Dogs. They weren't talking about the system specifically. They were just like, oh, Watch Dog looked awesome, and it did. Uh, watching that gameplay, and that was just random gameplay too, it was just, it wasn't a specific mission. It was just something you could do while you were playing, which is just insane. If you think about it, you can play that game and decide not to mess with any of the hacking stuff when you're doing like the uh, free roaming. You could play it GTA style, just go around causing mayhem and seeing how long you can last. That's, it's just ridiculous how much replay value this game's gonna have. And I love the uh, the multiplayer elements too. I love how someone can come into your game and try to mess with you while you're doing stuff. And on the, uh, the game trailers post show, one of the guys who was involved with the development of that game, I think the lead developer, I forget his name, he said that that element, they're, they're trying to make it so that people can't come in and just grief you, which is what I really like. But he also said that they can join your game physically as well as just looking at you through a camera, trying to hack you through a camera. It's just ridiculous. I cannot wait to play that game. I'm really looking forward to it. I do not want to play it on the PS3 or Xbox 360. To be honest, I was a little disappointed to hear that those versions are coming out. When I first saw this game last year at E3, I, along with most of the other people who saw it, said, fuck no, that is not a PS3 or Xbox 360 game, that's a next generation game. So it's kind of disappointing to hear that they wasted time, well not really, I'll get into that a little later, but it's kind of disappointing to hear that they spent time, you know, making a PS3 and Xbox 360 version. But with that said, I understand why they did it. You have a huge install base now on both the PS3 and the Xbox 360. So leaving that install base behind doesn't make too much sense. Especially when you have this much hype for this game. People saw that game and they were blown away. And rightfully so. I think that game's going to be awesome. Whenever it comes out, instant runner for game of the year. Instant runner. Especially after seeing that footage. The way everything runs so seamlessly, it's just ridiculous, man. Like, the one complaint I have is that I saw some screen tearing. And I'm pretty sure they're going to iron that shit out. And it definitely won't be a problem on the PC. Especially high-end PCs with good graphics cards. They won't have a problem with screen tearing like that. Run! It's Godzilla! It looks like Godzilla, but due to international copyright laws, it's not... Killzone Godzilla. looks awesome. Don't get me wrong, that game looks awesome. But the problem with that is that the community for those games seem to die off really fast. That's one thing I'm concerned about. Um, so I'm not, you know, as great as that game looks, I need, and don't get, again, 
it looks awesome and i love that trailer i love that gameplay but like i said the communities for those games seem to die off pretty quick i need to see more of it if, if i see some more awesome gameplay i may take the leap anyway even with the knowledge that the community may sway away from that game once the next big call of duty comes out if the game looks awesome if it looks like a single player game that i'm really going to want to play a couple of times i may go ahead and get it anyway but for right now the only two games that i definitely want to buy or definitely want to play on the playstation 4 are Watch Dogs and infamous second son a lot of people seem to be upset that the playstation 4 won't have backwards compatibility for playstation 3 games out of the box honestly it's like i wasn't gonna get rid of my ps3 anyway so i really don't care the one thing that i don't like is that games that you downloaded from psn you won't be able to play them on your ps4 you're gonna have to cut your ps3 on again and play on the ps3 but uh, again you know that doesn't really matter to me like if i really feel like playing shatter or any number of the games i downloaded on psn on my ps3 i'll just cut that system on i'll still have it limiting backwards compatibility it works in sony's favor from a business standpoint because it keeps the playstation 3 relevant Otherwise, you'd have a lot of people just running out to trade their PS3 in the moment the PlayStation 4 comes out. And you're still going to have people who are going to do that, but this is really going to cut down on the number because a lot of people who have PlayStation 3 have a fair number of games for it. And you're not just going to want to trade in your system and all your games, especially if you really enjoy some of those games or you really enjoy some of the downloadable games you've, you've invested money into. I got a lot more to say about the event, but I'm going to try and wrap things up here. Overall, I really like the event. I'm looking forward to the system a lot more than I was before the event. Um, Sony held some things back, the look of the system, the pricing, or at least officially. But uh, we'll hear about that more around E3 for sure. And whether or not I get the system day one really depends on the pricing and some of the other concerns I have about the system. Uh, that's it for me. If you want to know more about my opinions, you can check the blog post that I have down below. It's in the description. But I'd really like to hear some of what you have to think. What did you think about this event? Are you leaning towards getting the PS4 day one? Are you still on the fence about it? What did you think about some of the games you saw? That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.